Welcome to Access Channel 5, brought to you by Greco Pizza. I'm Daryl Sampson. And I'm Daryl Cooper. This afternoon here at KDA Arena, the Axemen are playing the new Brunswick Varsity Reds. And today, Daryl, this is a matchup between two second place teams. And it's gonna be a big game. Yeah, with um, with Acadia second place in the Kelly Division and UNB respectively second place in the McAdam Division, it's gonna be proved. It's gonna prove to be a big game as both teams are gonna be digging to get two more points to hopefully close in on the leaders. And the last time this, these two teams faced off, it was November 14th in 1998, and UNB won the game 6-3. Starting in goal for the Reds is Ken Carroll and. Donovan Nalawa gets a call for Acadia. Peyton for Acadia, moves it in deep. It's chased down low. Sauter bumps his man, it comes around the other side. Fury keeps it in. Sarah's quick shot by Sim, that just went wide. And Quinn works it back the other way for New Brunswick. We got a penalty call here right off the bat. Looks like it may be UNB going in the box, Daryl. Yeah, right in front of the play, Joe Bouvier took a shot at one of the Acadia players, and Willie Murphy took no chance on that one and called it down. Kyle Quinn, beg your pardon. So Acadia gets to work on their first power play. And they're 17.8% successful to this date. So hopefully they're going to try to get a goal right here. Wow, works it down low. Comes in behind the net. Burgoyne picks it up for New Brunswick. He tries to flip it out. Fuster tried to keep it in. And managed to squirt out over the line. Now Fuster for Arcadia. Moves it up for Fury. Fury just dumps it in. It's in behind the net. Van Dyke took a swipe at it, but Hogue cut that off. Now St. Louis tried to bring it out. Morale has it for Acadia. Back for Fury. Fury, down low for St. Louis. Back for Fuster. Here's a chance at the side of the net, rolling right front, and Ra couldn't handle that one. St. Louis now for Acadia to Hogue. Hogue looking, it gives it back. Here's a shot. Hit the side of that. Oh, no chance there. And a good save. Carroll had to be pretty sharp on that rebound, Daryl. Absolutely, Daryl. Uh, as you saw, Josh St. Louis moving the puck around pretty good there, and he took a shot. Hit the side of the net. And UNB goaltender Kenny Carroll took no chances and covered that puck up. Now, I think Acadia has got a keep in mind here as they move the puck around is use their defensemen because they got the big shots back at the point. As they got Chris Payne out there right now, along with his linemate Jeff Bennett. Slapped around the boards there as it comes outside the zone. Bennett picks it up for Acadia. Moves it up for Klassen. Rink wide for Mercer. Here comes Mercer down the side. Side to shoot, but side to try to pass and they score! Big play right there as Acadia came flying up the left or the right hand side, beg your pardon, and Jeff Mercer made a nifty little pass back to Klassen. And he took a backhand shot and beat Kenny Carroll. I don't know if Kenny Carroll looked as sharp as he wanted to on that one, Daryl, but I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. Well, Mercer made a fake, sh fake the shot there, made a nice pass across to Klassen. As he beat him, Acadia picks up the power play goal. Here comes Hunter now, bringing it up and over the line. So it goes deep. Comes out front, and Katie McKellar works it back the other way. McKellar puts it over for Burgoyne, and that's whistled down on the offside. 
Just underway here to Katie Arita, 17-47 remaining in the first period. Katie leading the one game, one nothing in the game. And as we mentioned earlier, earlier the goal did in fact go to Klassen and was assisted by Mercer and Bennett at 148. Now, Katie has really got to try to build on this lead now, Daryl. Fury for Bennett. He works the back around as Sim comes up the ice now for the Axeman. Sim cut in the middle. Trying to work his way in. Still with it. There's a quick shot. There's a chance on front. He scores! Kenny, Kenny, Reg, or Kenny Carroll for the UMB Varsity Blues is obviously disgusted with themselves as Acadia goes up 2-0 early on in this hockey game. And we saw Mike Sims with a nifty little shot as he was off balance. And his line mate gobbled up that rebound and buried her home. I think it was Sauter that scored that one. It looks really not now. Acadia really wants some payback. As you guys know, that last year in the CIAU Finals, UNB beat Acadia. I'm sure Acadia would nothing like more than some sweet revenge here. Here comes McLean. He dumps it in. UNB yet to register a shot. Now Rao, he just tips it out in St. Louis. Trying to get it out there, but he was hooked. It's shot back in. Socken for Acadia. Schuster. He just dumps it in as the axe will make a change. Now Rao and uh, McLean behind her are having some words behind the play. Thus that caused the whistle. You and be a little bit upset there as Todd Rao tripped up Dax McLean. And Dax McLean got the retaliation. He's headed to the box for two minutes, obviously for roughing. So the Axemen busy on busy early on in this hockey game as they go on their second power play. Shooting to make this score three to nil. Yeah, their last home game against the Dalhousie Tigers, the Katie Axman managed three power play goals. And they started off the their first goal here was on the power play. And they're working on their second right now. Back to the point for Fuster. Fuser gives it off for Hogue. In behind for St. Louis. He gives it back for Hogan. Hogue. Pass across. Fury with the shot. And there was a good save there. Carroll had to be a little bit sharp there with some traffic in front of the net. Yeah, good puck movement there by the Axemen as they got it back to Fury and came crossing top of the circle, actually, and he took that one. Big shot of his. And Carroll made no mistake in covering up the puck. Now an interesting note, while on the power play, Acadia has scored 23 goals and has had five goals scored against them. It's a pretty high ratio of shorthanded goals. Yeah, it's something the team's got to work on. Fury, there's a the shot. It's deflected in front wide. In behind the net now. There's a quick pass up front. Carroll had to be shot there as he pounced on it before Rao had any, any chance for a rebound. Yeah, Todd Rao, the Acadia Axeman, is a feisty little player. I'm sure the UNB or Varsity Reds are going to get used to him by the end of the game, as we saw Zanudu, or Zanano, take a couple extra shots as him as Rao's trying to dig, dig that puck free from Kenny Carroll. Six shots so far registered by Acadia. Wow, 
Lassen and Campbell. Campbell wins that back. Mercer rubs his man out. So comes back for Peyton. Peyton just kind of flicked at that, and that was deflected outside the zone. It's four minutes in here, 2-0 the score for Acadia. Goals by Klaas and Sauter. Bennett for Acadia. Up for Peyton. So Acadia looks to work it back in again. That's picked off there. Burgoyne was rubbed out by Bennett. So it comes back into Acadia's own. Now Klassen. He just dumps it in down deep. Sim chasing after it. Katie works it around the outside now. Peyton pass across, Bennett fired a low shot there. That was steered wide. Here's Klassen, he tried to get a shot through. That's cut off. And Zanuto just fires it down for UNB. Both teams make a change. Just 30 seconds left in the McLean penalty. St. Louis for Acadia. Nice little move there as he works in and over the line. Rao picks it up for him. Here's a pass back for Fuser. Here's a chance. And Rao put that over the side of the net. Now St. Louis working down low. He gets bumped. Van Dyke in there trying to jar it loose for New Brunswick. And it's blown down. Katie has been looking really sharp early on in this hockey game, Daryl. And it's something the UNB Varsity Reds really got to get going on. They've been looking really bland out there and not making crisp one-time passes. They haven't even registered a shot on net. It's something they hopefully will do before the game's out. <laughs> Nunweiler looks pretty lonely down there. He wants some, wants some shots on net. Down in the corner. Zaleri has it now. In behind for Hunter. It's tied up along the boards. Now Campbell has it. For New Brunswick, around for Burgoyne. His Reds just dump it out now. Penalty's expired now, as we're five, back to five aside. Now it's down low, being tied up. We're going, pokes it free. As UMB breaks it back the other way. Here comes Campbell, couldn't handle that pass and lost it. As the Axeman just dump it in. Ever going, trying to, having some trouble with it, getting it out of the zone, as he was being pressured. Here's back to the point. There's a shot, that was just water the net. Here comes Fury, there's a blast. Comes around the other side, and outside of the zone. He sits back down the ice. Fury puts it off for class, and he was bumped there. McKellar just took a swipe at it. Now Katie has control. They dump it out. There's a nifty little pass there. Oh, there was a big hit. Center ice as Hope tried to take his man, but I think he got the worst of that one. Now Anders with it. For New Brunswick. He's being tied up by Fury. Back to the point. Bernard managed to keep it in. So it comes around the other side. Now class and for Acadia, working up the ice for Mercer. Mercer, long shot in deep, that was deflected. Just wide of the net. 
UNB really having a tough time here, Daryl. Absolutely. Now it's down low. Miller with it now. Puts it back to the point. Comes out for Fuster. Fuster, quick shot. Good save there by Carroll as he kicked that one away. Now Hagberg setting up for the, for the Reds. They bring it outside the zone. Van Dyke just flips it out. As Acadia tried the quick break the other way, trying to catch him on a line change. Here comes Sim coming down the line. He's being tied up. Still manages to get it back though. Now Sauter for Acadia. Try to pass up front. There's a shot by O'Leary. Carroll stopped that one. Back out to the point. Socken kept it in. And UNB breaks back the other way. Campbell. Pass up the middle for McLean. Tried to give that to Andrews. That was ahead of him. And Sim, Sim dumps it in. UNB's been looking really flat lately, Daryl. Or thus far in this first period, they can't seem to get anything going. They're trying to make those lead passes, but just can't be seen to can't seem to be hitting the mark. Seward throws it up. So Katie recovers. Here comes Broda. He tried to squeeze by, and Stewart wouldn't give him any room there. As UNB fires it down the ice. Anders race after it. Touches it first to prevent the icing. Now Anders with it. He threw it in. It was offside. So he had to recircle. St. Louis for Acadia. Breaking up the ice. He's got Rao with him. St. Louis still with it. Now he's being tied up. Managed to get it back there. He tried to pass out for Klassen. That was cut off. Adds his dumb back didn't New Brunswick end again. McKellar. Put it up for Burgoyne there. A little bit ahead of him. Now McMillan for it. He has it now, trying to work his way in. There's a quick shot, and oh, what a good save by Nunwaller. So kick the pad out there. He covers up. And that being the second shot on net by the UNB Varsity Reds, as assistant captain Burgoyne came in, took a nifty little backhand shot, and Nunwaller made no mistake covering up that puck. Now I'm sure UNB head coach Tom Coolen is probably telling his players at the bench right now, just keep your composure, don't get any more stupid penalties, don't give Acadia any more chances to get that, that puck in their net. Start banging the body, moving the puck around a little bit better. And start working with their hands a little bit better too because they can't seem to get the handle on the puck. Acadia works it up now, Mercer has it. Wide pass for... Peyton. Peyton throws it in around. Now UNB trying to work it out. Katie not giving much room in the middle of the neutral zone. There's a battle along the boards for it now. The squirts outside. Bennett racing back for it. Peyton manages to pick it up. McKellar doing some forechecking there. Now Andrews with it. Trying to work his way in the middle. Here's Andrews. Try to pass there. That was a good defensive play by Peyton as he blocked that pass. And we got a penalty here, Daryl. And it looks like Jeff Bennett had, is heading off. He got tied up in the corner at one point there and he tried to make a, a dangerous pass in front of his own end as he heard the crowd react. And he heads off to the box for two minutes for slashing. 
Well, we're getting a chance now to see UMB's power play. I think UNB would really like to get something here. Try to get something going before the period's out. Uh, I think Acadia is picking up another penalty here. As there, two of them might be going off, actually. It was Jeff Andrews, a UNB, heads to be, seems to be heading off, and Josh St. Louis. Yeah, right at the face off there, they were oh, kind of whacking at each other. Had a little bit of a jousting match there. And Head referee Will Murphy didn't take any chances on that one and sent them off. So a couple of coincidental penalties there, still five on four. Katie's got to try to kill off this penalty. Keister for Acadia. Tried to fire that, but Zanudo kept a good job keeping it in. And we have another penalty coming up here, Daryl. Well, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to see which, which player did what. But again, Will Murphy. It seems to be an Acadia player going off. As Neil Fuster comes over and chats it up with Will to find out what's going on. And it was Sokin going off for two minutes for tripping. So they're going to be two players down, Daryl. And while shorthanded, they've only had one shorthanded goals and they've had 19 against. And their penalty kill to date is 84.4% successful. So a big thing they got to try to work on here is just getting the puck up and out. Don't let the UMB players get open in front of that net. And Hopefully Nunweiler can be their fourth man. Yeah, good chance here for UNB is they're gonna be on the power play, two man power play for a minute 47. Down low, McLean has it. Max McLean gives it off for Campbell. Campbell moving in with it. There's a shot that was deflected wide. It comes back out to the point. Hegberg with it, he winds up, fires. Good chance there, another rebound. McLean couldn't Connect on that one. McLean with it. Zorick has it now. Back for Hagberg. He gives it back to Zorick. Rink wide. Zanudo. Hagberg. He tried that pass there and deflected off Hunter. So it squirts outside the zone. So far, Katie is doing a pretty good job. And here comes Hagberg. Inner the line. Hagberg lost control there. Works it back out to the point. Cross for Zanudo. Zanudo pausing. Wink by pass, here's a shot. That was blocked. Hegberg, he winds up, shot, and they score! I was almost beginning to wonder, Daryl, when the UNB Varsity Reds were going to, in fact, shoot the puck. They seemed to be passing it around, looking for that perfect shot. But instead, it finally came back to Rob Hegberg at the point. And he saw his opportunity and he took the shot, which beat Nunweiler low to the left side. I think that's a goal Nunweiler would like to have back. But he can't blame himself because his team was, in fact, down by two players. Now UMB still in the power play. 50 seconds left in Sawkins' penalty. As they cut the lead in half, 6.58 remaining in the first period. 2-1 the score for Acadia. Here comes Burgoyne. Tried to bump it in. And shot back outside the zone. And the scoring for UNB's goal there was Hegberg from McLean. And it came at 12.56. Burgoyne for the Reds. Trying to work it wide. Slows up a little bit. He was Bump from behind there by Peyton. Puck squirts around the other side. McKellar, pass across, here's a shot. Good save, rebound. And a good save there again by Nunwaller. As you and me was looking to tie it. Yeah, a couple big saves there by Nunwaller as we saw Craig Menard of the UNB Red Varsity Reds take that big point shot of his. And we, try, we saw Steve Zork try to gobble up that rebound, but Nunweiler being 
the goaltender that he is, he was well in position and covered that puck up. Fury fires that one around the boards. Is it funny hot and it comes out for Hunter. She comes in, leaves it for St. Louis, but couldn't get that. St. Louis does manage to pick it up. Now Fuster, he just throws it in deep. Menard in behind the net. Nifty move there to get away from Hogue. So he puts it up for McMillan. Now Fuster for Acadia. Up for Hogue. He dumps it in. Acadia chases in behind. Can't shot around the boards. Now Hogue for Acadia. Just dumps it in. So Acadia makes a change. Cuvier tried the pass there. That was cut off by Sauter. He had to just flick it in as Mercer was in offside. And it gets blown down. 5-13 remaining here in the first period. Katie leading by a score two to one. The shots are nine to five for Acadia. As we saw Acadia go up eight shots to O. And with UNB going on that power play, two men up. They accumulated five shots on net. Yeah, Katie, or sorry, UNB rather, came up pretty flat for the first half of the period. In these last few minutes here, they've managed to turn it on a little bit. Fury took a swipe at that and headed in the Acadia bench. Ladies and gentlemen, during the first intermission, two Acadia students will battle it out in the second annual Twinks on Ice race. Watch for Twinks on Ice in the first intermission. Kyle Quinn of the UMB Varsity Reds with a few choice words for some of the Acadia players as he heads off to the bench. He's still jarring with them now. Will Murphy gave a little toot of his whistle just to remind the players that He's in charge, not them. I don't know if this is going to turn out to be a very physical game, Darrell. I think both teams are really gunning for the goals because obviously the win's more important than physical dominance in this game. So it'll be interesting to see how this game goes for the rest of the game, rest of the two periods and the rest of this period. Fuser for Acadia. Coming out now. Puts it over to St. Louis. He dishes it back off to him. In behind the net. Campbell has it now. So he just flicks it out. Along the boards here. Broda just dumps it in. So it goes in behind the net. Stewart. Now Campbell puts it up. That was cut off by Sauter. O'Leary has it now for Acadia. O'Leary making his way in. There's a shot. Carroll makes the save there. Now Peyton. That was a battle along the boards there. Sauter took a swipe at his man. So he lost his helmet. He's pretty upset as he heads off the ice. Here comes Peyton for Acadia. Oh, and he's really run over there. It's a big hit by Zanuto. What a Put him on his back. Now Zanuto coming back. McKellar. Tried to pass out there. As Acadia recovers. Now Hegberg. He dumps it in. Goins in chasing there. Fury gets to it. And he lost it. Now McKellar. Tried to pass out to the point. Klassen had it tighter for a second. But it came in around him. Now Katie coming up the ice. Here comes Klassen. He just throws it in. He sees Tart. Heads off. Jump 
Here comes Egbert for UNB. Bringing it up for Menard. Menard, long shot wide. Here's a chance for Burgoyne and they score. And Daryl, it looked like Nunwaller really had, was confused on that dumping. Oh, it was an unlucky play there as Nunwaller came out to get the puck behind the net. It took one of them funny bounces off the back of the boards. Came right out. And Burgoyne was Johnny on the spot. Is he had lots of time to oh, put he, it home there. He wasted no time firing that puck home. Nunweiler obviously a little bit upset. He thought he knew every nook and cranny and bounce and divot inside this rink. But that puck got away from him there. And again, UMB scored and the game is now tied at two. Sometimes you wonder, Daryl, if they ever actually practice a play like that. Well, you hear all about the NHL players practicing in their home rinks. And they know every bounce and bank and all that stuff, but seem to wonder if a team like Acadia would actually practice something like that. Hunter for Acadia. Puts it in behind for Sokin. Acadia trying to retake the lead. So he had a strong first half, and but UNB has really come on as, as of late. Tied up down low, Miller trying to kick it free. St. Louis comes to help him out. Finally it's blow down, 146 remaining in the first period. Two all the score. Katie leading in the shot ca category, 10 to six. And as we see Miller heading off to the, the bench for a change. As he was tied up along the boards with Chris Van Dyke. The faceoff comes within UNB zone. The Katie's really got to try to win this faceoff here, Daryl, if they want to get one of those big shots from the point. As we see uh, Fuster's out there, along with his buddy Chris Payton. Nick. Arcadia would certainly like to regain the momentum heading into the second period. Here comes Zanuto. He flips it in deep. And that comes out back outside the zone. And shot back in again. Fuser for Arcadia. Dumps it out. Now Stewart. Working down low as Broda was bumped. Now there's a battle along the boards for it. St. Louis, Rao. Everyone's being mugged in there. Finally it's blown down. Temperature's starting to flare a little bit. Now there's been a, lo a lot of mucking in the corners, Daryl. As we saw Zenudo practically undressing Josh St. Louis. We don't want any Acadia Axman fans to get too excited. That seems to be about the sixth or seventh time play's been called down in UND zone as Acadia's tied up the puck. And again, Josh St. Louis has got to really try to win this faceoff, Daryl. Get it back to Neil Fuster or Peyton. And Katie really re relies on that point shot. Well, since earlier on in this, uh, this period, Ken Carroll hasn't really been tested at all. And you have to wonder if he's falling asleep or he's cold or something. They just got to really start firing the puck at him. Renard for UNB. Hooked to the other side. Now Burgoyne. He, so, he throws it up. Here comes Fuse for Katie. Here comes the long, there's a long shot. Carroll stands that up pretty easily. As Burgoyne has it now. Burgoyne trying to get around Fuster. Fuster has him tied up. Get a good defensive play there.
in behind for Nunwaller. 20 seconds left here in the first period. So it comes back outside the zone, Menard for UNB. Try to pass out there, here's the shot. Klassen, as he wind up there, he was decked by McMillan. As UNB works it back the other way. Well, that'll do it for the first period here at Katy Arena. And a couple mixed impressions by both teams. As we saw UNB come out flat and go shotless for the first half of the period. And then they, as they went on to the power play, they managed to get themselves a goal. And we saw Acadia, who, was really, who really came out flying early on in the first period. And they seemed to go flat as UMB gained the momentum. Yeah, Acadia picked up a couple quick goals in the first three minutes. But since then, they've slowed down. 2-2 is the score here at Acadia Arena. We'll be back for the second period. We're back for the second period here at Acadia Arena. After an interesting first period, Darrell, as we talked about before, Acadia jumped out to a quick 2-0 lead. And UNB rebounded to tie it before the period was out. Yeah, Acadia had two big goals in the first period. One coming by Klassen on the power play at 148. And then the second one coming from Sauter at 2.34. And it almost seemed that it was a reversal in the team's plays as Acadia went a little bit flat and UMB got a little bit of a bounce. And a couple good calls there by the referee as they head on to a, a two-man power play and they capitalized on that with Hegberg scoring UMB's first goal at 12.56. And then Burgoyne late in the, in the period Tied the game at two. With a funny little bounce at the back of the boards, none while I was a little confused and Burgoyne buried it. So it'll be interesting to think what the coaches have talked to their players about. They probably said, probably very similar, saying that they need to get more shots on net as the shots are only 11 to 6 right now. But obviously the coaches can't be too pleased with the, the way the teams are playing. Andrews dumps it in there for New Brunswick as it comes in behind for Fuster. Katie bringing it out to center zone. Sokin lost it there. And Fuster regains it for Katie and he just dumps it out. Dax McLean for UNB. They bring it out of the center of the zone. Andrews with it now. Coming down the side, waits. Dished it off for Campbell there. A little ahead of him. It's over for the side. Now Hegberg. Up for Campbell, he just kind of chipped it in. Sawkin has it now for Arcadia. Swept around in behind the boards and Campbell for New Brunswick. Sends it back in behind again. Katie shoots it out. CUNB brings it back the other way. Nothing going so far here in the second period. It's, it's being shot back and forth down the ice. Oh, he's tied up. Swipe, swipes it in the zone there. Carroll, here's a chance. Mercer came in streaking there and got a quick chance, quick shot off. Carroll kept both of those out. Now McMillan, he fires it in. Comes back down to UNB zone. It's in behind the net. A couple of Katie players battle for it. It's back out to the point for Peyton. Tried a shot there, that was blocked. 
Peyton kind of wind up and tried to fire it back in. Now Van Dyke. Sauter, there's a shot. That was steered wide. So it comes back out in neutral zone. Here comes Sauter again. Leaves it for O'Leary there. Larry, there's a try to shot there. Stop before it got to the goal. There's a quick chance up front and Sauter. A quick shot off there and it hit the post. Good chance for Acadia. So Larry was calling the offside there. A lot of fans disagreed with that call. Yeah, it didn't look to be offside from all the way up here, but nonetheless, that's a call. And as we saw, Sim earlier on there make a little nifty pass to his line mate Sauter. Sauter looking for his second goal of the game. We saw UNB goalie Ken Carroll kick out that left leg and make the save. And behind the net for Miller. Miller still working out. Try to pass out front for Hunter. But he didn't see that coming. As UNB works it inside the zone. Here's the chance. That was cut off. Now Acadia breaks out the other way. Covert. He just throws it in. Carroll out of his net to play it. Comes back to Covert. There's a shot. Right in front. Good save by Carroll. Rebound. Oh, and another great save. So he took the, kicked, the, kicked it out there. Back out to the point. Cover looking for another ch chance. Now Gallant has it down low. Now they battle along the boards for it. It's, it's kicked around the net. And Sanudo just flicked it out. Now we got a penalty call. It's going against the Axemen. And I believe it's Gallant going to the box. A lot of fans really disagree with that call, Daryl. Yeah. Acadia player Gallant can't be too pleased with himself right now. Although he thought he got away with the play. Head referee Willie Murphy called him for interference. It's hard to say if it actually was interference it was or not. Behind the play there, and uh, the UNB player had fell. And Glant just kind of stuck his hands up the air as if to say he didn't touch him at all, but nonetheless, he's in the box, and UNB will be working on the third power play. One power play so far already in this game. And there was a shot that was just deflected over the glass. A little bit of bad luck by Acadia there, too, as they seem to have a little bit of a momentum boost as they had two or three good shots. A couple coming from Covert and Miller. But of course, Ken, Ken Carroll for UND was standing strong in nets. And I believe this is UNB's third power play, Daryl. Is it not? Yep, third power play. 2-2 Two -two the score. Here's a chance for McLean. There's a shot. Fired that high. As Menard has it now. He works it in behind the net. Now Campbell. He's a little bit open there, just kind of threw it at the net, but that was cut off and thrown back down the ice. Here comes UNB. Menard, he backhands it in. This is in behind the net there. Campbell tried a centering pass, but it went right up the middle of the zone and down to UNB's, UNB's in. Now Hagberg for the Reds. Come out there, he fanned on that pass, and Hogue almost had a chance. Here comes Klassen, there's a pass. It was behind Hogue. McLean comes back the other way. He puts it in for Andrews. Comes out to the point. It was kept in there by Zanuto. Zanuto does another kick. Good job of keeping it in as he kicked it up to his stick. Katie hey, having a tough time trying to get out of the zone here as they had three good chances, but Zanuno's kept it in every time. Finally, they get it out. As Stewart's 
Skates around for UNB. Stewart still with it. Fires it in behind. Nunweiler leaves it there. Sawkin picks it up. Comes around the boards. Hunter tried to get a pass up there for Rao, but Zanuto cut that off. Now Fury for Acadia. Leaves it for Hunter. She chopped it out of the zone. Acadia penalty is expired now. 14 minutes remaining in the first period. Two all the score. Here comes Hunter for Acadia. He just jumps in and Acadia makes a change. Carroll leaves it there for Van Dyke. It's UMB, they tried a long pass there. Larry stood in front of that one, so he kept it in. Now Burgoyne for UNB. He's got McKellar with him. Burgoyne still with it. Merkin his way around the net, trying to come up front. Here's another chance and they score! Well, Van Dyke is sneaking in from the point there, Daryl. As UNB takes the lead. Yeah, the ever dangerous Ryan Burgoyne, as he wheeled and dealed behind the net, eventually got it out in front. Chris Van Dyke made, made no mistake burying the puck in the back of the net. Nunweiler didn't really have a chance. He was at Van Dyke's mercy. But I believe that whole play and that whole goal came from the efforts from Ryan Burgoyne. As he picks up an assist, obviously, on that goal. Yeah, Burgoyne did a good job there as he kept it to the outside. Worked his way around the net. And now an interesting note, Daryl. For all of Acadia's games thus far this year, in the second period, the scoring's gone 28 goals for and 30 goals against. So obviously, this period's been the weakest of the three. It's something Acadia's really got to work on. They, they got to try to get one back. Here's Benner for Acadia. Long shot in, wide of the net. As it comes down to Acadia zone now, Bennett with it. Bennett, pass out. Peyton, tried to pass there for Hunter. Couldn't handle that. It's down in deep. Rao was checked along the boards there as he lost control of it. Now Fuster, he just kind of throws it off the glass and down the ice. Icing is waved off as UNB starts back the other way. Anders couldn't handle the pass. And UNB dumps it in. Here comes Rao for Arcadia, making his way to the line. Drops it off for St. Louis. St. Louis throws it in behind the net. Merce is really being tied up. As Andrews has it now for the Reds. Sokin for Acadia. Comes up for Hogue. Hogue just throws a weak shot down in there, and Carroll gloves that easily. Not a, not a bad play at all there by Hogue as he just fired it on net, and Carroll obviously made the easy save. But Acadia's really got to try to slow it down, get a couple face-offs deep in UNB's zone. Hopefully get the puck back to the point, move it around a bit, and get that big shot on net. Carroll hasn't really been tested thus far this period. But it seems to be that both teams are a little bit sluggish, and they're, they're not making really clean pa like passes back and forth. It's something obviously they both have to work on. Yeah, they both both teams usually try that long pass up the middle and hasn't been working as of late. Here comes Fury, there's a sh chance, and he shot that high. As Acadia works it down low. Fury had a pretty good chance there. Couldn't connect.
Now Gallant, he's being tied up by Van Dyke. He almost fell on the puck there as he gets back up, kicks it loose for Hogue. In behind for Klassen. Klassen being checked there by Burgoyne. Katie doing a good job so far, keeping control of the puck. The cannon manages a shot, and UNB steals and comes back the other way. Here's McMillan trying to get around his man. But Peyton stopped that play. Now Hegberg for Menard. Menard dumps it in. As it comes back to him, he just threw it in on net. As no Muller stopped that, and Acadia dumped it out in the middle zone. Now Zorik, he just kind of turned and fired there as that was wide of the net. Back for Menard, shot. Skips out to the other side. Here's Hegberg streaking in. Here's a quick shot. Now O'Leary, back the other way for Acadia. He's got Sauter with him, O'Leary. Just shot, a shot there, but there was a late offside call. Yeah, O'Leary skating at about 5,000 miles per, per hour there, made a late stop, and Suter misunderstood or misread what he was doing and went offside. That's yeah, something Acadia's really got to Work, uh, work with, actually, is their speed. Little guys, little feisty guys like O'Leary and Sauter, they really got to try to get the puck to them out wide. They can dig in deep into the end and try to get that puck in front of the net. Hopefully somebody like St. Louis or, or Todd Rao bang at home. Here's Rao chasing down low for it. Got dumped there by Seward. St. Louis picks it up for Acadia. St. Louis. Stick handle trying to work some magic. Acadia hoping to tie this game here as Broda has it now. Stewart managed to recover for UNB. Tried to throw it out and Fuser skated over there. He kept it in. St. Louis now working behind the net. Tried to center it. Couldn't get it through. As is fired outside of the zone. Here's Andrews. He's got a one on one with Sokin. Andrews. Couldn't do anything there as the puck was just flipped in the corner. Zacadia works back the other way with a three on two. Here's Sada. Leaves it for Fuser. Fuser, good chance. Fired on. And they score! Big play there by Acadia, as we saw Sauter streaking towards the net. Took a pass back to Fuster and took that big shot on net, and Carroll wasn't able to handle the puck, really. Gave up a huge rebound, and it looked to see, seem, seemed to be, excuse me, Mike Sim that gobbled up on that rebound and fired her home. Here comes Sim. He lost it there. So Katie brings it into the, in the zone. Peyton throws it in around the net. Yeah, that was a good chance, good uh, play there by Katie with the big shot from Fuster. As Carroll made the initial save, but like you said, gave up a huge rebound. And really didn't have any chance of stopping Sim. Peyton racing after it. 8.02 left in the second period here as Acadia ties the score at three apiece. Hunter down low for Acadia. He's being bumped, manages to scoot away from his player. Works it back out to the point. 
There's a quick shot, and that was tipped in front. But a good save by Carroll there as he deflects it wide. Glassen with it now. Working with, down low for Hunter. Hunter doing a good job, keeping control. As Glassen works it down low for Mercer. And Daryl Acadia has been doing a really good job as of late, down low in the corners, keeping away from UNB. Yeah, they're doing a fabulous job cycling the puck down low, but they just can't seem to be getting any of them, anybody open in front of that net for that pass. Now St. Louis comes and bumps his man. Rao picks it up. Still trying to keep control. St. Louis has a chance now as he picks a quick shot. And Carroll running out of his net there. Gobbles up the loose puck. Yeah, I think, I think UNB goalie Ken Carroll, as you see there, was anticipating or he was witnessing the strength that Acadia was possessing in, the, in their own end as they were cycling the puck. And he, I think got a little worried. And as you saw the puck go floating in the air, he took no chance and came running out to cover that puck up, I guess. Shots 19 to 10, favor of Acadia. So Carroll's had a fair amount of work this game. Here's Sokin for Arcadia. He dumps it in deep. Carroll in behind the net to play it. Throws it around. He comes back up the other way. Sokin and Andrews are hacking at each other. And now McLean has a chance. McLean's still with it, working it in. Oh, and it, it was tipped there by Peyton as it went over the top of the net. Here's another chance right in front. None while of the save. A couple good chances there for UNB. Here comes St. Louis. Back the other way. Comes down low. Oh, and he really leveled his man there. St. Louis. He just absolutely run over Campbell. And UNB is going to be picking up a penalty here. Here's a chance. Right in front. Oh, and a good save by Carroll. And you notice there, Daryl. St. Louis really leveled his man. Yeah, and he obviously drew the penalty. And Katie had a really big chance as they, there was the delayed offside and then while head towards the bench, put on that extra attacker. He saw Neil Fuster come flying in from the point, hopefully get a shot on net. Didn't prove to be that hard of a shot for UND goalie Ken Carroll. As he covered it up, made no mistake. And Campbell, who took the worst of that hit, retaliated on the play and he picked up the UNB penalty. Now, as we saw earlier on in the first period, Acadia went on two quick power plays, and they haven't went on one since. So this is their third power play, and hopefully they'll, they'd like to capitalize on this one. Out to the point. Acadia was going to throw it in on net there. Didn't quite make it, though. Now Bennett for Acadia. Up ice for Sim. Sim takes it down the line. There's a quick shot. That was right on Ken Carroll, though. So he smothers that. The shots thus far are 22 to 10 for Acadia. And Ken Carroll has obviously been the, the strongest point of this UNB team. Although UNB has had some chances in Acadia's end. But with only 10 shots, I can't really expect much from that as Nunweiler's looked strong this far, even though he's led in three goals. One, one that he would like to have back that was a bad bank off the boards earlier on in the first period. But Here's Hogue back at the point with it. Hogue. Down low for St. Louis, comes back out to the point. Fury for Fuster, there's a shot wide. St. Louis at the side of the net. And he passed that and that came out through the crease. 
UMB managed to recover as they fired outside the zone. Big chance by St. Louis there as he had the open, open net. But unfortunately, he's a left-hand shot, not a right-hand. He had to try to do it on his back end. Instead, it looked like a pass through the crease. Nobody was there to put it home. St. Louis, down low, start to the side. He gets a pass back from Sauter, so it comes out to the point now. Fuster with it, there's a shot. That didn't make it through. Hogue scrambles after it and recovers. Now Hogue puts it down low for St. Louis. St. Louis working it out front, had a couple chances there. Good saves by Carroll. She so kept that out with the pad. Now it's battle along the boards there. Fuster springs it free. Put it out for Fury, but he had a weak shot. It's a sail wide, and then UNB just fired it down the side, or down the ice. Under 20 seconds remaining in the Acadia power play, and just over four minutes left in the first period. Three all score. Now Mercer with it. Mercer circles around, puts it in behind for Hunter. Hunter tried a quick backhand pass there. As it comes out to the point, here's the shot. That was deflected wide. Now Hunter for Acadia. UMB's picking up a penalty here. As I believe it's Naismith that's heading off. Very undisciplined play there by Naismith as he took out his man in front of the net. That has finished killing off a two minute penalty, doing a good job of that. Keeping Acadia out wide, not allowing them to get any deflections in front of the net. But very undisciplined as he took that player out. And Acadia heads on to their fourth power player of the game. Well, Acadia would like to keep the momentum going as they've had some pretty good chances so far. St. Louis has had some great chances down low. It wasn't able to capitalize. Yeah, I think the main reason St. Louis hasn't had a goal thus far is because every opportunity he's had has been within about a foot in the net. And not very much room to play play with or work with. Can't can't seem to get the puck upstairs fast enough. Bennett. Is he working out, Peyton? Cross pass, and Sim picks it up for Acadia. Sim working in, quick snapshot. Good stop there by Carroll. Comes up back out to the point. It's Klassen. Fan on the pass, but then put it back out to the point. Now Bennett with it. There's a, a shot that was just down low. Bennett kind of really ran his man from behind there. Here's Sim. Sim had a chance there, and that was Deflected. I think a Acadia player, Mike Sim, got a little too excited on that play as he found himself open. He got the, the puck as he was heading up to the top of the hash marks. And he just wanted to wire one home, but he ran out of room, and one of the UNB players ended up pinching the puck loose. Better certainly took a risk of taking a penalty there as he... Uh, Took his man Burgoyne from behind into the boards. Yeah, I think UMB is a little bit upset with that. I'm not actually sure that Burgoyne's seen him coming. I believe that's what Tom Cullen was arguing about, but nonetheless, Katie is still in the power play for another minute, seven seconds. Now Fury with it. He throws it in there. Kind of right at St. Louis and deflected off him, and UNB recovers and ice it down. Now Fuster for Acadia, up for Fury. Fury tried to pass it across to St. Louis. Since in behind there, swept around behind the boards. Hogue has it now. 
Now we're out for Acadia. He sidestepped a check. Still has it. St. Louis jars it free. Back to the point for Fuster. As it comes out to center zone, Fuster now with it. Fuster taking it over the line. Fuster still with it, circles back out to the point. Leaves it for Hogue, he gives it back to him. Here's the shot, that was wide of the net. Oh, and St. Louis had another good chance there, but couldn't connect. UMB player comes back on, now as we're five aside. St. Louis in behind the net for, with it. He's being tied up there. And there was a little bump by Hunter as Bernard took him down. Now Naismith working around the outside. Naismith coming in on a goal. Here's a chance. Oh, what a good chance there. And Nunwaller stuck the pad out. Here's Peyton with it. Katie throws it in. Andrews in behind the net. Andrews comes out. Andrews still with it. He's not there, but no call. And Katie works it back the other way. They got a three on two. Here's Sauter right in front. He was tied up there. Now O'Leary works it loose. Tried to get it out front. Couldn't make it through. And he gets dumped behind the net. So McKellar comes back the other way. Just under 30 seconds here left in the second period. There's from uh, Van Dyke behind the plays, mixing it up. I believe it's Sauter there. They're still shoving at each other. Kevin Dickey and the Acadia bench are obviously upset as Sauter seemed to be tied up by Van Dyke for about at least 20 seconds worth there. Looking for a call from head referee Willie, Willie Murphy. And I believe Van Dyke is in fact heading off. Not quite, not quite sure if Sauter's picking up a penalty or not. Well, Van Dyke and Sauter are both heading off the ice. I'm not sure what they'll be getting. Looks like it's just gonna be a couple, couple minors. Just 19 seconds left in the second period. And as you can hear, the Acadia fans are a little bit upset with that. As Neil Fuster's over giving his piece of the story to one of the referees. Wondering why the play wasn't blown down earlier than what it was. And as you could see there that Kevin Dickey was trying to get an explanation from the referee. Well, it's in my opinion, Daryl, that head referee uh, Will Murphy should have blew the blew the play down a lot earlier than what he did. Van Dyke obviously was interfering with Sauter. And I mean, after about 20 seconds of being held, I, I know from experience it gets a little gets a little annoying, and he seemed to retaliate. The Axmen are delaying the faceoff here as they're changing positions. Now looks like we'll get things going. McLean, he just kind of tries to center it out there. So it pops out in front of the net. Now Sawkin fires it around. Comes out the other side. Here's a shot on goal. There's another chance for UNB. I would have just slid off Campbell's stick there as the whistle goes. McLean and Mercer had a little scuffle there. A little bit of the late stuff. You see St. Louis take a little crack at one of the UNB players. And they'll have a few choice words. Well, Daryl, and UNB took the lead here in the second period. Yeah, with a goal from Van Dyke at 6.50, UNB went up 3-2, and then Acadia tied the score, or tied the game up with a goal from Mike Sim at 11.09. And 
And it's, it's going to be an interesting third period. Because obviously both teams want to come away with the win. They don't want to end up in, with a tie. Might well, even see some overtime. Here at Acadia Arena, it's scored a 3 3. We'll bring it back for the third period. And we're back here for the third period. Tie score between Kadia and UNB. Just reminding again, this game is brought to you by Greco Pizza. And Daryl, your thoughts for this third period upcoming for both teams? Well, both teams really got to start passing a lot better. The one thing UNB's hopefully got to work on is their shots on net. They've only got 12 thus far. And in the eyes of head coach Tom Coolen, that can't be too good. And Acadia has been doing fairly well. They've had 25 shots thus far. But the, obviously, the big story is the goaltender in net for the UND Varsity Reds, Ken Carroll. And an interesting tidbit of information, Acadia's record after the second period, when tied, is two wins, one loss, and zero ties. But as far as OT games is concerned, they've only had one win, and they've also had one tie. So if this does go to overtime, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. UNB in behind their net. It's swept around the boards. Anders has it now. Leaves it for McLean. Rouse stripped him. Now Campbell with it. Here's a long shot out. Nunweller stopped that one, covers up for the whistle. And Jason Campbell for UNB, having a quick shot on net. And Nunweiler made no mistake. It's basically aimed at center mass, and he just covered up that loose rebound. I think that was just what you were talking about, Daryl. Like, UNB really has to get some shots, regardless of how close they are. Exactly. Or how far away. It was a long shot out there, but I think he was looking for a rebound and just trying to get a little more work on Nunweiler. Well, none of the Weiler hasn't really been tested thus far. And it's hard to say. I mean, UMB isn't really familiar with his uh, style of play thus far in the game. I mean, they've only had 13 shots on net. But hopefully they'll get a break, and maybe he'll make a mistake, and they can fire home a rebound. St. Louis for Acadia, working it back up the ice, and now there's going to be a penalty that's behind the play. I believe it's Saucon that's going to be heading off. So he had McLean all wrapped up. Yeah, Saucon's going to head to the box for two minutes. I believe it's probably for interference on Dax McLean. Yeah, it was for interference. Kind of, kind of a careless penalty as it was behind the play, and St. Louis did have possession of the puck, and he was heading out of his end. And UNB is going to head on to their fourth power play, and they've really got to capitalize on this. Get some shots in net, put Nunweiler to work. In behind the net. Zanuto is tied up there by Klassen. So he's doing some good forechecking. Now Hegberg. Up for UNB. He tried to dump it in there. And it doesn't work as Acadia gets it down the ice. Carroll puts it up for Hegberg. They're trying to catch Acadia on a change. It's Peyton slapped at it. And sends it back down again. 110 left in Sawkins penalty. So far, UNB really hasn't gotten anything going. Here's Anudo. 
for Hegburton. He was stripped there. Here might be a chance for Rao. Rao streaking down the suck as side as the puck's rolling away. There's a chance up front. Peyton with the big shot. He scores! And as we saw for that play, Todd Rao made a good play as he pinched one of the UNB players and forced them to cough with the puck. And he went in on a two-on-one with, I believe it was Hunter. He tried to put the puck across to Hunter. And unfortunately for UNB, it took an unlucky bounce off one of their players. And Chris Payton wasted no time firing that puck home. Well, that's Acadia's only, se only their second shorthanded goal of the year. As Peyton's goal puts Acadia up by one. Yeah, it was a big goal right there. It's obviously going to be, it might prove to be the turning point in this game. Interesting to see how UNB handles this. So they still have 30 seconds left in their power play. Now Menard for UNB. To Campbell, as UNB is trying to get an equalizer here. And Acadia just doing an excellent job killing off this penalty thus far. Here's a long pass up as McLean dumped it in. But that'll about do it there for the Acadia penalties. They killed this one off. Now behind the play there, Anders took a swipe at Fuster and it looks like he'll be picking up a roughing penalty. The fans are arguing because I guess after that he had took another shot at one of the other Cadia players. Yeah, he, he took a shot at O'Leary as O'Leary was headed off to the bench. And Kevin Dickey and the rest of the Acadia Axemen are obviously upset. Looked like about three or four of them wanted to come over the bench after Jeff Andrews. A real care careless play by the UNB player. Tom Coolen. I can sense his anger all the way from up here in the press box. And Andrews is gonna pick up four minutes here as he picked up an extra two minutes. Oh, so he did in fact After the whistle. That. Sorry, Darrell, he did in fact pick up that extra two minutes for pushing on Mike O'Leary as he was heading off to the bench. Now Tom Coolen's a little disgusted as this is. He wants a neck or is he wants to plead his case. And as you can see, Will Murphy explaining to one of the UMB coaches as to what's going on. Real careless play by Jeff. Jeff Andrews of the UMB Varsity Reds. Play comes out in the neutral zone as Fuser has it now for Acadia. Acadia hoping to build on this lead with a good chance here, a four minute power play. And they have one power play goal already. St. Louis works in, in over the line. St. Louis, quick shot there, good save by Carroll. Comes back out to the point. Fury with it now, he winds up, fires, and they score! The Katie Axman are wasting no time in this third period as they go up two goals on the UMB Varsity Reds. And I believe head, head coach Tom Coolen of UNB is obviously a little disappointed in his team right now. Because they had an excellent opportunity to go, to go up on Acadia when they had the power play. And they gave up, gave up a shorthanded goal to Peyton. And then again, Acadia went on the power play themselves. And we just saw Fury here, the fifth goal for Acadia. Of the 
Throws that goal there, watches the rest of the first minor out. It's Katie and has another, there's two minutes left on their second power play. Feaster at the point, there's a the shot, that was blocked. Good block there by Campbell. So he slid across in front of that one. Now Hogue for Acadia. Brings it in over the line. Menard just slapped that one out. So it goes down the ice. Peyton for Acadia. So it comes out for Klassen now. Klassen wheeling in. And whistle call there as Acadia was blown down for the offside. 15.37 remaining in the first period as Katie jumped out to a 5-3 lead here in the third. And Daryl with a minute left in this power play. It would be interesting to see if Acadia can build on this lead. 29 shots on net. They've obviously been testing Carroll enough. And I think they might actually get another goal here. And so far that's pretty much been the big difference this game is UNB's only mustered 13 shots. Now Klassen for Acadia. Puts it across for Bennett. Couldn't find room on goal, so he dumps it down low for Sim. Sim with that, and now whistles bonus. We got an injured UNB player over by their bench. I'm not quite sure who it is. Yeah, it was a little bit behind the play. Everybody was watching the puck. It's hard to say. Who did what? It seems to be Van Dyke. I don't want to make any false claims as to what happened, but obviously head referee Willie Murphy didn't see what, ac what exactly happened. So it doesn't look to be any penalties assessed. Chris Van Dyke. Decides to skate off himself there. Coolen's right down by the ice though. I think he'd have a like to have a word with the, the referee. But I'm not sure if he'll get the chance. Well, as you can see him, he's at, he has a few choice words for the referee right now, but Willie Murphy's not, not going to have anything to do with that dispute. And Coolen's really disgusted at this point. It's Katie still has 35 seconds left on the power play. Here's a shot from Fury. Stopped there by Carroll as that's steered in the side. Now Hogue with it. Puts it down low for St. Louis. St. Louis with, with it. Okay, he gets it back from Hogue. As they pass it back and forth. Hogue fan on the pass there as Burgoyne picked it up and UNB fires it down the ice. Oh, coming back for Katie. One more chance here. See so he wheels around his man coming down the side. Pucks down low. Andrews steps on. He tries to get in behind the play and here's a chance for Andrews. He's coming in on a breakaway. And then while they're poked it away from him there. As Andrews was being tied up by Fury as well, it was hard for him to get a shot off. Here's another chance, Campbell in front, that's deflected over the net, and it's out of play. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your 50-50, winning number of the South for That last sequence of plays there, Daryl, is just, just goes to show how UMB has been playing this game. They've had every opportunity to have shots in net. They've almost been waiting for the most precise, precise moment to take that shot. And as you saw there, Andrews got the lead pass, and he went in alone. Although one of the Acadia players was tying him up, he had an excellent opportunity to score, but none while he poked it away. Peyton for Acadia. Up to Klassen. Klassen gets hauled down. He dumps it in. Stewart has it now for UNB. 
up for McKellar, and he just kind of flips it over. Here comes down the side, here's a shot by McMillan, that was wide. As it comes out to the other side, Hagberg with it, fakes a shot coming in. Out front, there's a chance, oh, what a good save by Nunwaller as he gloved that one there. And as UNB player, Jason McMillan found himself free in front of the net, he took a shot on net. Nunwaller went down in split position and made no, no mistake as he made that glove save. First real shot of the period on Nunwaller. Yeah, with only 15 shots this period, or sorry, this game rather. Nunwaller isn't showing any signs of cooling off. Here's a chance, McKellar, that's deflected wide. Here's Acadia recovers now, Sim. Sauter gives, tried to give it back to him there, and that was intercepted. Now Sauter for Acadia, pass up the middle for O'Leary. Sim tried to pick it up. There was a battle down low for it, but Hegberg picks it up for UNB. Now Larry in behind the net. Tried to have a quick backhand pass out there. That didn't work. Now McKellar with it for UNB. He's stripped of the puck there by Hogue, and Hogue comes racing back the other way. Hogue down the side. Just throws it in on goal. Carroll stopped that one. As UMB swiped it back out in the set, in the middle zone, then it's thrown back down low again. Now here comes Bouvier, in over the line, trying to make his way around Sokin, but he stood him up. Still are along the boards. Bouvier picks it up again for UMB, circling and around behind the net. Sokin ties him up again. Now it's out to the point. Shot didn't make it through, as Sokin cut that off. And he throws it out, Acadia makes a change. Menard. Put that up as UMB dumps it in. Now Fuster has it for Acadia. Up for Broda. Broda has a one-on-one -on -one now. He waits there. Just kind of threw it in a no man's land. There's no Acadia Axman around. Now Quinn tried a long pass up there for McLean. But Fuster races back and UMB's called on the icing. 11.28 here to go in the third period, 5-3 the score. The Varsity Reds seem to be looking for a little bit of a spark there as they had possession down in Acadia's zone. Nonetheless, Acadia always seemed to be turning around with a two on one or a three on two breakout. A couple interesting plays and a couple opportunities for both teams. But no real hard shots on net. And UNB had a good chance earlier in the period there with Andrews getting a semi breakaway. And then they tried it again with McLean, but that pass was ahead of him. Now Broda tried to get it. There's a sh shot directed near goal. And here comes St. Louis. St. Louis trying to beat his man, Hagward. There's a shot on goal. And Carroll stops that easily. Some players mix it up a little bit after the whistle. I believe it was Neil Fuser that gave that lead pass to St. Louis as he went streaking in one-on-one -on -one against Hedberg. Tried to put the moves on him and take that quick wrist shot on net. He was hoping to use Hedberg as a screen there. And now referees. Looks like there's going to be called call a couple penalties here. I don't know what the call is exactly, but I believe Quinn's going off. I don't know if uh, oh. 
Referee Quinn. Willie Murphy had, or really liked what Quinn had to say to him. Sauter is also in there as well for Acadia. A couple coincidentals, delay a game is the call. So obviously they were mouthing off against uh, Willie Murphy's permission. <laughs> and he sent them off to the box. Well, I think UMB just called a timeout here, Daryl. And I think certainly no Tom Curlin realizes this game is not out of reach. Lots of time left here. Over 11 minutes remaining the hockey game. Yeah, a couple things Tom Coolen's probably going over with his team right now is don't let Acadia break out with the odd man rush like the two on ones or the three on twos. They can't afford to give up any more goals as they are still down with the score five to three. And they got to get some more shots on net. They've only tested Nunweiler 15 times this game and they've had three goals. So with that success rate, a couple more shots might earn them a goal. And I think that's all Tom Coolen can ask for right from, from his team right now. Oh, Carroll's still over at the bench now. I, I don't know he's if he's getting he... his stick check, looks oh. like. I thought for a second UMB might be pulling some kind of trick and playing without a goalie for the rest of the third period, but. Giving his team a little extra bit of a breather there. I always find that goalies do that. They always fake like an equipment problem or anything to get their team a little bit extra rest. Here comes UMB, back the other way. As right now there's an Acadia player hurt behind the play, Sim, as he's trying to skate it off now. Yeah, Sim, I don't know if he was decked behind the player or what, but he came up limping as he heads off to the bench. He's really hampering that left leg. I think the culprit might have been, don't quote me, it might have been Peter McKellar because I saw him skating away. It's hard to say if it was him or not. But I'm looking across right now and it seems to be that Mike Sims pretty upset as he was throwing his gear and slapping his stick. He seems like he's in a lot of pain. So we see him there, he's grimacing. He's a tough guy though, he'll be all right. Now in behind goal now. We're going, couldn't handle it. Sawkin picks it up for Acadia. Backhands it high. It was kept in though. But Acadia managed to shoot it back out. It's for going, picks it up for UNB. He just dumps it in. That's thrown back out the center ice. As now Menard has it for UNB. Working pass across for Burgoyne. Burgoyne slaps it into Acadia's zone. Coming around. Bouvier trying to gain control. And plays whistle down there. On the offside. We're at the halfway mark here. In the third period. And as we see Mike Sim comes off the bench. Skate off that. That stumped left leg of his. Whatever did happen. We're not sure of. He seems he's, to be all right, though. Seems to be okay. Ten minutes exactly to go in the third period. Katie is still up, it's five to three. Gallant dumps it in, and Katie will get called on the icing here. I think a little bit of miscommunication between Gallant and Hunter as Gallant thought that Hunter might be streaking out, try to hit him with the long pass. Instead, Hunter wasn't in position, and icing was the call. We 
We had a little bit of delay there as referee Murphy prevented a UNB change. They tried to get in a late change. Puck rolled in on net there, and Bouvier went crashing into the Nunwaller. I don't think Jeff Mercer took too much liking to that. We might end up seeing a dance. It was hard to tell if Bouvier was actually shoved into Nunwell or not. But nonetheless, Mercer took exception to it. Well, I had a pretty good look at it, Daryl. It didn't look like Bouvier had been shoved into Nunweiler. Looked like he pretended to fall and took a little extra step. But nonetheless, any any team that happen, that tends to happen to, they don't take too much liking towards it. As we saw a big tough guy, Jeff Mercer, out there. He was first to grab on to Bouvier. Could be that maybe Bouvier was just trying to shake up Nunwell a little bit. Try to get him off his game. So Katie has doubled up the shots on UNB here, 32 to 16. So Bouvier and Mercer are going to sit down for a couple minutes, a couple coincidental penalties. No big deal, still five on five. And on goal there. None while I saw that clearly as he gloved that down. I think Acadia has really got to try to work on this uh, face-off right now. Try to win it back to their defense and hopefully get it out of their end. It, it just seems to be always won by UNB at this point. As we've had consecutive plays, it almost seems exactly the same as the one before it. it keeps going right in on net and Nunweiler covers it up. Here's Stewart for UNB, trying to work his way in. Here's Stewart again. There's a shot. That was wide of the net. So it comes around the other side for Hegberg. He sweeps it in. Now McLean for it. McLean down low, passes out, and Zanudo has it now. Zanudo working his way in behind the net. As UNB is trying to control, but they lose it there. Sokin just flicks it out of the zone. And Hegberg recovers. He fires it in. Nunwaller leaves it there for Sokin. Now Broda for Acadia. Runs out of room there as he's bumped by Campbell. Regains control though. Now Broda for Acadia. Working over the line. Broda, quick shot. Right on as Campbell stopped that one. It was interesting to see that Acadia actually got out of their end that play as UMB was applying the pressure. Hopefully looking to spring, spring loose uh, the puck and have an open man streaking towards the net. But nonetheless, Acadia got out. The face-off's deep within UNB's zone. Simon, Simon Burgoyne squaring off. As UNB controls the puck now, here comes McKellar. Down the side, throwing it out in front. And Nunwaller stared that away, and O'Leary turns on the Jets as he comes back the other way. He fires a shot, goes cross side. Now they battle along, down low along the boards with it. Fury has it now, Fury couldn't get through. Menard had poked that one away from him, and he ended up shooting it out into center ice. Katie dumps it back in again. Now Peyton tried to glove it, but here's chances. UNB comes in, shot on a good save by Nunwaller there. It was a great chance by Zora because he had a quick backhander. Nunwaller equal to the task, though. And Acadia gets called on the icing here. 7.39 remaining in this third period. A big chance by UMB player, Pete. Excuse me. Steve Zork. I was going to call him Peter, but his name's Steve. 
Big chance as uh, Chris Payton went to glove the puck forward. He misread it as it bounced between his legs and Zork was sent in alone. But with one of the Acadia defensemen streaking up behind him. He could only go to his backhand and Nunweiler stood up to him. Stopped both shots on net. And I think for UNB, Darrell, they really have to get a goal soon. Time winding down here. They gotta really start putting a little more pressure on goaltender Donovan Nunwell. Yeah, with seven and a half minutes, they really gotta start doing as you say, applying the pressure, but the big thing is shots on net. They seem, they seem to be adding a little bit more pressure, but they haven't been getting the big shots on net. They've only got 18 thus far. They should be well up around 30. Now Hegberg with it. Trying to find it as he picks it up. Puts it over for Stewart. Stewart caught up and behind the net. Managed to get it out. Sokin throws it back in again. Katie makes a change. Stewart tried the long pass there for McMillan. That slipped off the end of his stick. Now Fuster, he was rubbed out along the boards. Sokin gains control for Acadia. Here comes Broder, coming down the side. Here's a chance for Acadia. Good shot on, and Carroll makes the save there. She squeezed the pads together. Managed to keep that in front of him. I don't think Broder was really ready for that play. He saw the puck that sprung loose and went streaking in. I think he'd like to have that one back because he didn't get as much wood behind that shot as he liked to have. But nonetheless, he's applauding his players for getting that puck up to him. And he had a really good chance there, really put the UNB Reds in a hole. And Carroll comes up with another save. Keep the Reds within a fighting chance. Here's Fuster now as he dumps it in. Now Shoop just throws it out. There's it stumped back in again. Menard. Up for Shoop. Peyton has it now for Acadia. Working it up the ice. Sauter has a Leary with him and St. Louis. St. Louis, the trailer, comes in, cross across. Oh, what a great chance for Acadia, but Sauter just slipped that way. Another couple chances. And Carroll stopped both those rebounds. But a great play there by St. Louis. Nifty little tic-tac-toe passing play. As it started with O'Leary, he dropped it back to St. Louis. He thought St. Louis was going to, in fact, take the shot as he headed towards the hash marks. He said he put it back over to Sauter, and Sauter had the open net. But he just could not put it home, and he's a little disappointed with himself right now. He, in fact, thought he did score the goal as he raised his hands. But Ken, UNB goalie Ken Carroll looked pretty strong in that play. Now Sim fires a quick shot there. So it hit the side of the net. Now Sauter, quick shot on net. Carroll stopped that one. As McKellar has it for UNB. Up for Burgoyne. Burgoyne, rink wide pass. With that shot in. Fury picks it up for Acadia. Tries to move it up along the boards. Doesn't get out though. Now there's being a battle for it. Sim manages to poke it loose. Acadia makes a line change there. Asakin just dumps it in. Now Fuster with it. Cross pass for Hope. Waited there for Klassen to get offside. His pass there was stopped. Now we're going with it. Tried to kick it up and ended up stepping on the puck and falling there. Now Hogue comes back the other way. Russell Hogue. There's a shot on and Carroll decides to hold on for the whistle. 4.38 remaining here in the third period. Katie with the two goal lead. As you can see, a packed house here at Acadia Arena. 
And again, Acadia is doubling the UMB Varsity Reds in shots, 36 to 18. And as we mentioned earlier, the big thing that UMB had to try in this third period was to add a little more pressure and get some shots in net, but they have not been successful to this point. A couple huge, huge chances by Acadia. But their players is unable to find the trip the handle on the puck, or the fire at home. Fury now for Acadia. Just throws it out of the zone. As Peyton picks it up now. Peyton fires it in. But bounce off the boards there as it came back out. And Fury had to sweep it back in again. Now Quinn. Left it out as it's dumped down. Quinn with it now. Quinn throws it in deep. In behind for Nunwiler. Peyton was being hooked there by Bouvier as he fell down. McLean recovers for UNB. UNB looking for another goal to bring them within one. St. Louis, he's bumped behind the net. Kind of jumps on his man. There's a chance out in front. And that's scooted wide. The whistle's blown there as the net came off its moorings. Campbell went crashing into the net there. I think Brodo was a little late covering his man, Campbell. As they went crashing into the net, Brodo took a little extra shove. And lucky for Nunweiler, he got out of the way as he saw them coming. I think a couple things to look for from both teams. Acadia first. Acadia is going to try to control the puck, keep it out wide, away from, away from the net, away from the center of the rink, and just dump it whenever they have the chance. For UNB, they've got to get some shots on net. With only 3.35 left in this period, and with only 18 shots in this period, they've got to really fire that puck at Nunweiler, test them a little more before this game's over, and hopefully head this game to overtime, if not get the win. Katie would certainly like to pick up a couple points here to close the gap within St. Mary's as St. Mary's has a four point lead on in the division with just a couple weeks left in the season. Now Zanuto puts it down low for Campbell. So it's tied up along the boards there. McLean just threw it across the rink. As Campbell picks it up again. Now it comes out for Hegberg. He throws, tries to throw it in on goal, but that was cut off by Hunter. As Hunter comes back the other way for Acadia. For Brody, here's the chance. That's went wide. Now Stewart for UNB. Coming back the other way. Pass up for Zanuto. He just deflected that in. As the Reds get some fresh recruits out there. Now Monard. Pass up for Burgoyne. UNB fires it down the ice here as they get called on the icing. I think Sauter's pleading his case there as he saw the goalie had left his crease to play the puck. Instead, icing is the call, in fact. It'll come all the way back down into Acadia's zone. And it'll be interesting as this game comes to a close, how the Kelly division is going to face out. As you said, Daryl, St. Mary is up four points on Acadia right now. This will definitely be a huge win for the Axemen. With only two weeks left, as you said, it's hard to say who's going to play who in the AUAAs. And I think the thing, too, is, Daryl, that with this division being so close, every point counts. Here's a chance for Menard. As I was saying, though, every point counts in this division because teams would love to have home advantage. But one week you can be in first, and the next week you can be in last. And we get a penalty call here. 
I believe it's going against Acadia. I think Mike Sim got a little too over anxious there as he was trying to play the body. And he put down Peter McKellar pretty hard. Of course, Willie Murphy was in position to call the play. Now with only 2.04 left in the game, two minutes of it is going to be a power play. The fifth power play, in fact, for the UMB Varsity Reds. And I think for sure that they would like, they need a goal here on this power play. Also have a look to see if they pull the, goal, the goalie because it, it, it is actually going to be an interesting play because Acadia can dump the puck so they'll have any chance to shoot at the net. There's a shot that hit the post. Now, well, it didn't really seem like he saw it until the last second. Now McKellar battling for it. But Acadia manages to get out in the center zone. Now Hegberg. Just tried to flick it in there, but it went to Fuster as he dumps it down the ice. A yeah, big shot by UMB defenseman Brian Stewart as he was just an inch off. And he hit the post. Here comes Campbell, winds up, fires, good shot. There's a rebound, chance. And Zanuto went crashing in the goalie there as he had a couple chances. And now he's going to be called. And I believe it's goaltender interference. As Zanuto got a little over anxious going in for his own rebounds. He had about two or three swipes at it. Well, he's really pleading his case here. I believe he just simply lost his balance and crashed in the Nunweiler, but. Now, I think that's a tough tell for you, you tough call for UNB to take. Because he was going for his rebound, and I think it was pretty hard for him to slow up. Well, this really turns the tables now as you see Tom Coolen over at the other bench. Having a little holler, he looks like he wants to come out on the ice and talk to the referee as to what's going on. He's with his team with the power play advantage. And now such a controversial call. It's an unfortunate for UNB. So now it's gonna be four on four hockey. It's gonna be a little bit more open. So it's gonna be hard to see if, uh, or hard to say if they'll pull their goalie or not. Because with four on four, anything can happen. Any guy can spring loose. Well, right now, Carroll's playing high up near the red, red uh, top of the circle, actually. And he is, in fact, heading to the bench right now. UNB puts the extra attacker on. And here we go. Comes around the other side. Fuster's trying to battle for it as he's trying to get it out. But it stopped along there for UNB. Campbell with it now, trying to work it up front. He's being hauled down, and Acadia is going to be picking up a penalty here. As Fuster hauled down his man. That'll put UNB back on the power play with a lot of skating room out there. I think for Neil Fuster, that was a pretty stressful situation as he got beat. He ended up holding, holding on to his man. Still hasn't hit to the box. There he goes. But as I was saying, he held on to his player when he didn't really need to. And again, UNB, they'll have the man advantage. And still with the empty net, it's going to be five on three. So if Acadia has any open advantages here, they have the whole, the whole net to shoot at without Kenny Carroll and Nets. Katie fires it out zone there. So heads down the ice. Just under a minute to go here. As UMB works it back up the other way. Here's McKellar with it. Coming in over the line, drops it for Campbell there. Campbell across. Comes back out for Hagberg. There's a shot on, good save by Nunwaller. There's a chance for Zorik. He puts it on the side of the net. Another good chance. Just 30 seconds left here as Sockin tries to get it out. He was tied up. Now, oh, comes across for Campbell. Puts it to the side of that. Here's a chance for UMB. They couldn't get it through, though. 
as Acadia swipes it down. Just under 20 seconds here. Here comes Hegbert in over the line. Hegbert trying to dance his way in. Just five seconds to go here as Acadia will pick up the two points. And Sim tried one last chance there to get an extra run, but the game is over the 5-3 win for Acadia. And a big win by the Acadia Axemen as they head in, or head up the Kelly Division, two points closer to the St. Mary's Huskies. And some real good play for them this period, Daryl. They really outplayed them, especially that first half. Yeah, for the first half of the third period, proved to be the turning point as Mike Sim opened up the scoring. And Chris Payton, as we saw, got that empty net goal. Or, excuse me, Mike Sim did not score this period. It was the second period. Well, that'll do it here. That'll do it here today for Access Channel 5, sponsored by Greco Pizza. The final score, 5-3 for Acadia, as they come within two points of St. Mary's. And we'll talk to you again. See you next time.